Hi, I'm Luke. Today on Auto Darts, I've got my friend Tarek here. Tarek is uh, one of the major design contributors on the Auto Darts website. He's responsible for Jupiter and a number of other projects on the site. Today, we are going to show you a brand new platform called Little Rocket. Little Rocket is the world's smallest 3D printed blaster, and it is an extremely modular, versatile platform. The Little Rocket platform starts with the handheld version of Little Rocket, and you can see there's knurling here to hold this in your hand, comfortable to hold single shot blaster. But that's just step one. Uh, step two is a rail mounted version, a bottom mount that you can mount on the top of any blaster to add any ammo type to any blaster out there you want. Uh, it's a Picatinny rail by default, but we also have adapters to adapt to an end strike rail or a rival rail. Now, in addition to the bottom one, we also have right and left mounts. And what this means is you can mount it on the sides of your blasters and still have the trigger up, or perhaps you want to put it on the top of your blaster and have the trigger on the left or the right side. So there are four main body styles giving you a huge range of options when you build this blaster and put it on your existing blaster or on the base model, use it in your hand. I did want to mention that this is really a family of products and a platform of products. Little Rocket is the base model, which is the handheld variation, and then the mountable versions are called Proud Papa. So with that naming scheme, you can tell that we are already thinking forward of the next couple designs, so you'll see more family members added in the future. Little Rocket is a versatile platform that shoots a variety of ammo types. It uses an innovative twist lock barrel connection system that allows you to use a wide variety of barrels. We've got barrels for Elite, for Short Dart, for Mega, for Rival, for Boomco, and Ultra. And even for Ultra. Yes. He made me say it. <laughs> In addition to those ammo types, we've also got a triple shot and an inline three short dart shot, which can fire three in a row without reloading. In addition to the eight barrel types, you also can use a few of these double stacked. Uh, the single dart barrel here can fire two at a time if you double stack them. And uh, the triple can do the same as well. These barrels are really simple to swap on and screw in place. There's an O-ring up front that makes for an excellent seal. And it's a really fun little platform for a variety of ammo. One byproduct of making these barrels really quick to swap is that you can actually swap a barrel faster than you could reload a dart. So it would be possible to just have a whole uh, dump pouch of these barrels and really quickly swap them in, fire, put them in a used pouch and uh, continue firing. Past the customization of the barrel, you can customize actually a trigger, starting off with the most basic one, which is a stick. This is very comfortable to hold in hand, but it's also nice when you want to hit it from the side. The other types are thumb-based, so this is a nice groove for you to fit your thumb in. Or if you want it a bit higher surface to smack on, you can have a smash one. And lastly, this one is a cord-based one, if you want to pull the trigger at a, at a different location. We have three options for priming the blaster. The first one is a ring for a single hand pull. The second one is anchor for those that want a, a little bit stronger to pull and it's a little bit easier, especially on top of blasters and other devices. And lastly, we got the paracord, which is the easiest to prime and the smallest profile. Tarek also designed two really cool arm mounts. Uh, this first one is a static mount where you can mount little rocket on top and that you know, straps onto your wrist. And the second one, which is my personal favorite, is a sliding arm mount. We've got options of a single Picatinny, a long Picatinny, or a dual. So in the case of the dual, you would replace this here and you can actually mount two opposing little rockets. So you can whip this blaster in your hand and it has, and you've got two shots and it kind of is your ultimate last resort. It's worth noting that these are a modular approach. So these could be used with any other blaster and they're going to be a standalone product in addition to being compatible with the little rocket. Now I want to talk about something that's probably on your mind, and that's the performance. Yeah, to start off, let's give a reference. So a jolt usually gets 55 FPS for elite darts. 
compared to what we have with this, which is 90 FPS for elites and 105 for short darts. And Tarek did an incredible amount of testing and redesign and endless chronograph readings. The performance readings you're seeing on the screen are a 20 shot average and Another thing that's worth mentioning is that the standard deviation on this blaster is very low due to the shorter barrel type and a lot of power coming into the system. We're going to be offering two different springs with this blaster. The numbers you saw on the screen are of course the highest power spring, but we know that there are younger users that also might have a lot of fun with this blaster, and so we are going to offer a lower powered spring. And uh, sometimes the lower power spring is also better if you're going to handhold because you don't have as much grip versus when you've got this on a blaster, you've got a lot more leverage to really easily prime the blaster. That brings me to our next point, which is some of the more interesting use cases. So one of my favorite is when you're putting on any small handed blasters like this, especially ones that have a prime. This will actually help you prime both blasters at the same time. So now you can fire both pipes if you want. <laughs> and also, it doesn't prevent you from reloading. The Roundhouse is another great blaster that could benefit from this priming method. Basically, anything that's got a rail up here, whether it's Picatinny, N-Strike, or, or uh, Rival, is compatible because we've got different adapters for everything that's not a uh, Picatinny. One of my favorite use cases is the Rapid Strike because the Rapid Strike is nothing but rails. Here I've got it set up with a Mega mounted up front, so this both becomes my foregrip and it's actually, it actually has a purpose now. Uh, I've got the lanyard pull here so I can prime and fire, and if I want to swap out a new barrel, like with another Mega, I can prime, fire. It's a really sweet little setup, and again, of course, you can swap out all of your different barrel types and ammo types to meet your actual game method. So my other favorite use case, and I am slightly biased, <laughs> is on a Jupiter. So I know a lot of people talk about how the fact Jupiter, when you run out of ammo, you have no way to defend yourself. Now you have a solution. Right here, we got a triple on top. So after you empty out your incompatible ammo, everybody thinks you're out, you're reloading, you're like, nope. Boom, take them out. <laughs> talked about using a little rocket with blasters, but with Sam and Am, there's a lot of possibilities too. For Am, our arm mount, uh, one use case is you can put it on the same hand that you have your blaster on. So not only can you fire, but then quickly use your hidden blaster for taking out people that are, you know, expecting to reload. <laughs> Sam has a couple use cases. One is you can do gravity fed, swing your arm out to get uh, blasters into your hand, or you can even use a string power method to get into your hand. And lastly, you can do put two blasters on there, as we talked about, two little rockets, swing into your hand and then have two different shots or different ammo types. You can have megas and triples, whatever you would like on that blaster. I love that one. It reminds me of Assassin's Creed, which I'm sure a lot of people are going to put in the comments. Yeah. <laughs> I wanted to talk a little bit about the design history on this because this project has been a long time in the making. It started with Tarek approaching me, I think over four years ago at a Nobicon game with this contraption, which was an existing slide mount and two uh, minimize jolts to get the same concept that he's now 3D printed. And a lot of hard work and effort has gone into the evolution of this, so I wanted uh, Tark to kind of take it off. Yeah, so this idea all came around about five years ago when I saw something called a micro jolt. So you take a regular jolt and you minimize it. And then I was really obsessed about Assassin's Creed back then. And so somebody actually posted a picture of creating the gun pistol on Assassin's Creed. So I ended up replicating the same thing here, you can see. And from then on, I saw something called a spy net, which is this little toy that allows you to slip into your hands. And I was like, you know what? We can two, put two micro jolts on there. So you can see it here. And you know, as I was, I was cleaning my shop in recent time, I realized uh, these were broken. I wanted to remake it, but the process, such a pain to do, you know, um, micro editing jolts. So I was like, wait, I know how to 3D print. I've been doing this for a while. Can I make a 3D printed version? So that way, you know, it's really easy to reproduce. So I started something with like this, and you can see this is quite a big bulky version. <laughs> uh, the first prototype was like this. Uh, we used a different type of tubing internally, and this was screw on. My like for puzzles actually kind of gave me an idea how to do a twi uh, different type of locking mechanism. So I had this idea of these prongs, which is used for puzzle solving like, um, like maze type puzzles. So I took that idea and I extended it. I was like, can I make it work? for the purposes of a uh, quick barrel change. And so I did that and it worked out, the idea worked out, but then there was an air seal problem. So I solved that issue by like, oh, if I put an O-ring, which is what they're designed for, 
I can get this and it gives me a nice little clip on. So from then on, I kept moving around, uh, moving towards replacing it. So this is actually Luke's idea. He's the one who thought of, you know what? I was like, this tubing is too big because um, the material is quite fat. So can we do something different? And he's like, oh, we have the rival tubing that we <laughs> use constantly. And so he had the idea and I was like, okay, let's go try out the idea. And we just kept iterating, making improvements. Then we started creating different body parts. So this is left, right, and even bottom. And then we did many testing to reduce the size and scale of this. So making the neck a little bit shorter, uh, making the blast a little bit longer so we can get more power out of it, and even messing with letterings to see what kind of best lettering fits uh, once they go outwards or once they go inwards. That's just these two. So you can see here there's just been a lot of development and iteration and improvement and it's been a very long process and it's been really enjoyable to be the one just sort of giving feedback and guiding the project a little bit and just letting Tarek kind of do his thing. There's never enough time to design everything which is why we're such a great partnership because I could not possibly have invested all the time that something like this would have taken on top of all the other business aspects and finalizing the proton pack and everything else. On that note, the testing process for this was absolutely extensive. Being a computer scientist, Tarek is pretty into data, so uh, he and his fiance Bree did a ton of work in collecting all of the different data sets for different barrel types, different seals, different uh, ammo types to get us all the data to create the best possible product in the end. Every test we did, we ran with 20 shots that actually were executed and then each blaster was fired more than thousands of times and this is all done by Brie. She was an amazing person that managed to, you know, did every kind of A-B testing possible to make sure every barrel was tuned to the maximum possible FPS that we can get out of it. Uh, after we did all of that, we actually then sent it out to two waves of beta testers, uh, testing out to see what comfort, how easy it is to use, how easy it was to assemble. Feedback is an instrumental aspect of design. So from the beta users, you can see a, one visual representation. They had an issue priming this, so I made it even easier by adding these bridges for your hands to nicely fit within there. The assembly process for this blaster is remarkably simple. It's really easy to put together, it's a few basic steps, and we've got a full build tutorial that shows you step by step how to put this together. Now if you don't want to build it, we also have a checkbox at checkout where we can build this for you so you can receive this product fully assembled, which Mark's actually really the first product on our shop that is available fully assembled all the time. I also wanted to say that we've heard you. Uh, our customers have frequently told us that we could do better documentation and we are working towards that. And in that light, in addition to the build video, Tarek and Bree also created a really extensive PDF that you can download to build these. And that's got some really great renders along with instructions and even uh, hand illustrations that Bree did to show you how to build the product. Moving forward, I'm really hoping that we can do these style build guides for all future products, but they are a serious time investment. So I'm really excited to see what you think of them and whether you prefer the video version or if you like looking at the nice printed PDF. Finally, I wanted to talk about price, which I'm sure is a question many of you have been wondering. The price point on these blasters is gonna start around $25 and that includes two barrels. One of the great things about working with Tarek is that he comes with some bonus perks and uh, he's a computer scientist and knows quite a bit about web design so he's been doing a lot of back-end code for the website. So for this product, we were able to go totally crazy on the number of features and 23 plus colors. And so you'll see here on the screen, we've got just a really awesome color picker which allows you to uh, pick out the colors, pick out the options, and it will reprice everything according to what you've selected. We've got 23 colors for the main body and the bottom plates and six colors for the other accents. We did this to limit the quantity of bins that happens at the warehouse because the amount of space this has started to take up with all of the color variants is staggering. It's currently about a... 244 bins. 244 bins. 244 and, a, bins. and a 10 or 11 foot workbench up and, up and down. Tarek and I are really excited to finally get Little Rocket launched. He's been working on this for ages and I've been giving feedback but it's one of those projects that has really stretched out a very, very long time. So finally seeing it come to fruition and hit the web store is a really big deal for us. This little family that we've developed, the uh, little rocket and the proud papa being the mountable one, 
is definitely a family and we have more coming. I'm not gonna tell you anything about those right now, but I would love to hear from you what other family members would you like to see and what use cases are your favorite? Where would you put this on your blaster? Let me know in the comments and we're gonna give away two of these with the launch. A week after the video airs, we'll use a random comment selector to give away two of these free and in your choice of colors. Thank you so much for watching. If you're not subscribed already, please do and hit that like button. It helps out the channel tremendously. Until next time, I'm out of darts.